Hey there fellow creators, welcome back. Today we have an exciting topic to dive into creating captivating cloud shadows in Unreal Engine using light functions. I'm thrilled to show you how to breathe life into your scenes by simulating realistic cloud shadows. So let's get started. When we use an HDRI map in our scenes, it adds depth and realism to our lighting. However, there is a common challenge we encounter. The directional light fails to recognize the clouds in the map, resulting in the absence of dynamic and immersive shadow effects. But fret not, we have a solution that allows us to create a custom light function material using a noise texture and by harnessing the power of this material, we can not only simulate the shadows of those clouds, but also have complete control over the size, contrast, and movement speed, and etc. It's a game changer. So as you can see with this material instance, we would be able to control the contrast, the intensity, the tiling, and also we are able to control the speed of the shadows when we want to sort of animate the clouds and the movement of them, which is so cool. So let me walk you through the process. And the first thing that I want to do is to clear the material of the light function. And after that, let's check the noise texture that we want to use to simulate the cloud shadows. And this is that one that I was talking about. You can simply find these type of noise textures on any websites and it's not a big deal but the point is this texture will serve as the foundation of our custom light function enabling us to replicate the intricate details and characteristics of cloud shadows so let's dive into the material editor and create a new material using this noise texture and the first thing to do is to change the material domain to the light function and by doing that, you can see we have one activated node, and that one is the emissive color. So whatever that we're going to create, it will be finally connected to this emissive color node. But first of all, I want to create a texture coordinate node to generate UV coordinates that determine how textures are mapped onto the object. And I want to control it with a scalar parameter and let's name it as the UV tile and let's combine them by a multiply node and you can simply create this multiply node by holding the M button on your keyboard and click on a blank space so let's connect these two on a multiply and after that I want to connect this multiply node to an add node and this node adds two or more values together resulting in their sum and the reason that I've added this node is that I want to have another parameter and let's name it as the offset. So in this way, we would be able to control the tiling of the clouds. And at the same time, we would be able to control the offset of these clouds with this add node connected to the offset parameter. So let's move these nodes a little bit to the left side so we would have enough space to add the other nodes. And now I want to add a panner node to somehow animate the clouds by panning them in a specific direction and speed. And after connecting the add node to the panner node, I want to create a new constant vector and let's convert it to a parameter. And this constant vector will control the speed of the clouds and let's connect it to the speed parameter of the panner node and in order to be able to enable and disable this feature I mean the animated clouds feature I want to add a switch parameter to this material and in other words this switch parameter allows for conditional switching between different inputs or outputs based on a boolean condition. So now as you can see, I am connecting the panner node to the true option and let's connect the add node to the false option. Actually, I think it would be better to rename this node as animated cloud so we would be better understand when we work with the material instance. So let's continue. And here we are in the most important phase of 
this process and that is adding the noise texture to our material and simply let's connect the switch parameter to the UV and after that let's create a multiply node and just be careful I have connected the red channel to the multiply and let's create another constant vector and convert it to a parameter and this parameter will control the intensity of the clouds and let's set the default value of the intensity on one and after that i will connect it to the multiply but before i connect this multiply node to the emissive color i want to have control on the contrast of the cloud so let's create another constant vector and convert it to the parameter and as you can see i have named it as contrast but before we continue i think it would be better to set the intensity on 2 and let's set the contrast on 0 0.1 and finally i want to add a new node called cheap contrast which applies a simple contrast adjustment to a value altering the difference between light and dark areas of the clouds so in this way i will be able to control the contrast of the shadows that i want to have on my scene so let's apply the material and click on the save and after that now that we've created our material let's create an instance from this material and i will name it as for example cloud light function and with that done let's go to the directional light actor and in the light function section let's search for the material instance that we've created here it is and you can see that we have the shadow effects in our scene and let's take a look to the material instance and the parameters that we've created so we have the contrast the intensity the offset and uv tile and you can see that by activating this animated cloud the speed option will be added to the parameters of this material instance let's wait for the shaders so let's tweak between these parameters and see how they can affect our scene for example the offset parameter as i said before can control the location of the clouds and this uv tile can control the size of the clouds but let me find the best position for the shadows for example well actually you have to pay attention to the placement of the clouds and and somehow you need to reflect the shadows of the clouds on the ground and you can see that we can control the contrast and the darkness of the clouds by the contrast parameter and the intensity can control the simply intensity of the clouds just make sure to have the best value for these parameters because you are the author of your scene and you can see that by increasing the speed value we have the movement of the shadows so there you have it by creating a custom light function material using a noise texture we've unlocked the ability to simulate captivating cloud shadows in Unreal engine and now you can elevate your scenes to new heights adding that extra touch of realism and immersion i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and feel inspired to experiment with light functions in your own projects don't forget to like subscribe and hit that notification bell to join our creative community as always happy creating and see you in the next video